So we're back in Daisy, and we're on the PlayStation 4 version of the game. We're going to be doing a walkthrough today. So the reason I'm doing this is that the Xbox version of this walkthrough that I did uh, was quite popular and helped out a lot of folks, so I assume doing something similar on this platform might also be a good idea. So when you're starting out absolutely fresh, you see this here, we're at the 1.09 update, just for extra context. You get a couple different items off the bat, you know, your regs so that you can deal with cuts, uh, stick in case it's dark out and uh, a little bit of food. So I like to top it off a little bit. Keep in mind, we do have to actually conserve our food uh, quite a bit because the game is rather harsh these days in regards to your resources and availability, um, the food and everything like that. The loot economy is absolutely awful. And walking is a great way to keep up your reserves. You know, just walking around casually when you're running, you're eating and drinking well aka you're consuming those two particular important resources a lot more than you normally uh, would be just by walking around so that's something to keep in mind uh, at this particular point in time you'll actually find some great value out of other dead survivors that have maybe you know chosen to kind of spawn elsewhere because they don't like their spot and they kind of died so that's something to keep in mind because you know, you can go on their bodies and you can actually, you know, take if they have a food item or something like that, or their rags, you can take that uh, as your own sort of resource. If you do have something that you can actually cut them down with, you know, using a knife on them, you can shred them up and you can take the uh, the human steaks and the, uh, the fats. The fat is particularly good these days, but uh, just so you know, the human steaks very well could cause madness. So... That's something to keep in mind. Uh, a lot of the game and the experience of it is sort of just like, you know, walking around trying to find um, resources, and there's not a whole lot of them. So even smaller servers might be the, the best idea. And when I'm moving around in the game, I always uh, kind of use this thing called I Survive. So it's, a, it's an app type thing that you can... Well, it's an app, and it's also available on your... Uh, phone's mobile browser, you can use it in order to uh, essentially as a map of the game so that you know where the locations are, where you need to head. It is a, a very important tool for an individual's daisy survival. So I don't normally uh, like directly interacting with the zombies because there's all kinds of problems, but this one had a backpack and I kind of wanted it. Notice that I do have a level of sickness to me now, so that's not good. Uh, but yeah, a lot of it's kind of like dealing with the zombies in almost like passive ways in my opinion. Uh, just in regards to how you deal with them. They seem to be bugged out today, uh, not really being able to enter here, but uh, that, that's what I like to do, you know, kind of draw them in and then I'm able to sort of slowly uh, remove them from play so I don't have to actually deal with them, kind of lock them in rooms and stuff. Which can of course cause problems for other players, but uh, you know, we don't really care too much about what others are having to deal with, am I right? So yeah, that's also kind of a deadly thing, you can get stuck in doors, but like literally you can just get stuck on the inside of doors, so you just gotta be somewhat smart about what you're doing, how you're handling the zombies, you know, as long as you're sort of calm and relaxed with them, it's uh, not, a, not a huge deal to deal with the zombies. So we are wanting to head down over that way, you can actually zoom in if you didn't know that. Uh, using L1, double tapping that, which is kind of helpful. And I just trap that zombie there. Great. And we do have a radial wheel too, so we're actually going to equip our short stick to that. Uh, so the radial wheel is holding R1, and then you can kind of, you know, inventory wise, come over to it, click in the left, st uh, left stick there, and it'll give you the option to input it in. So again, you know, kind of coming over, clicking in, and then pressing uh, X on the spot on the wheel where you want to place it. Very helpful. But again, uh, if you are running, doing this regularly outside of the fact that, you know, I am trying to keep it up for the speed of uh, the recording, uh, you should walk this distance because it's going to save a lot of your food and water meter, which is important for keeping you alive. Uh, in the past, it would be really good to move along the beach because the overturned boats would have lots of food and uh, water resources, you know, pop cans, stuff like that. That's uh, really not the case these days. Uh, you know, it's just not quite available. You also should make sure that you are washing your hands in the game too. If you kill something, you get blood on it. 
Uh, you don't want to get that transferred over to your food. Uh, so you want to clean your hands when you can. I can't believe my character got a little bit sick, so if we can find some medical stuff, uh, we can deal with that in the uh, the medical center here. We're actually ending up in one of the most uh, comet cities that most people will end up in. Uh, Slechnichnia. Anyways, not how you say the name, but whatever. So at the end of towns, you'll actually notice they have signs, so that's a good way to understand where you are in the world if you have no idea what you're doing. And keep in mind that your movement also affects the noise you make. So you see in the bottom left hand corner there, uh, the noise meter. How it changes based on my movement. <laughs> and that movement is what is basically going to bring in the zombies towards you. So you can take the stealthy approach. If you get a good hit at the zombies in the back, you can actually instantly kill them. But very, very unlikely thing to have happen. And as you can see, loot these days is just uh, abysmal. It used to be uh, a lot better, but they seem to have turned this into a, a very, very tedious experience that continues to get harder with uh, each iteration and big update. So we'll have to see how that affects things over time. It just seems like the loot economy is terrible with nothing spawning anymore <laughs> from what I've seen. So we'll have to be a little bit smarter in regards to our looting these days in order to find things that others have you know, kind of left behind, and we're going to have to be a little bit smarter in dealing with the uh, the zombies here, because you, know, you get one zombie, they talk to all their zombie friends, and it causes a lot of problems. So I'll close that side here. Is that all the zombies? I could have sworn there's a third one out there. There we go. There we go, we got rid of that zombie. Good, so those ones are locked away, we don't have to deal with them right now. Which is excellent. If we could find a melee weapon, that would be ideal too. We also have to keep in mind that our, you know, our food and our water is depleting a little bit. If you can keep it in the green, you know, that's fantastic. Oh, it looks like our apple was actually ruined. So we can't use that anymore. And I kind of throw it away as a distraction. So it's got the red marker there, that actually means it's been... Uh, entirely destroyed. So we got a lot of zombies chasing us, which is uh, not a good thing. And usually there'd be other players too, but I don't think there's too many online right now. And even then, if you find players uh, and if they got guns, most of the time they don't even have like uh, you know ammo and stuff to shoot. Wow, that is uh, a lot of dead players there. I wonder if there's actually some good resources there, but we don't really know because we are trying to trap a whole horde of zombies in here. So we don't want to deal with them. Yeah, nothing too good. So we got everybody in here, it's all good, the whole party's chilling, and now they're kind of all locked out. Except for our one pal there, which we can dispose of using the stick. Some people find it easier to go into the first person in order to aim for the head, because it kills a little bit faster. Again, head shots, definitely a little bit better. So we actually got a food item from there, and a fancy vest, so that's kind of cool. Although for the food item, we're going to actually have to have something to kind of crack it open with. So it's not necessarily the most helpful of food items to collect, but, you know, it, it is a food item all the same. I think that's really helpful. So we could do, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe get like a pointy stick or something like that and kind of break it down. Which you got to be careful because if you break down a bush, it might actually cut your hands. So we're going to look a little bit more until we're uh, desperate on the uh, the food and everything like that meter. So these buildings, uh, there's the one here, sometimes has uh, oh, like a weapon or something like that. Maybe you'll find a gun. So it's rare, but you know it happens in these types of spots. And I like to come back here because these, these buildings don't usually have something helpful, but... Sometimes you'll find like a, a weapon or something here, as in like a blunt object uh, that could be very helpful in your survival experience on, on Daisy. Hmm. Yeah, so we got the, the short stick here. It's not really gonna help us. We kind of need the uh, the long stick, which I think you get from a particular tree. Oh, there's also maps in the game too. You can kind of see where you are in the actual big map sort of helpful. See the outlines? That's where your people spawn is all along the coastline. And then you move inwards if you're lucky. 
But it's something you gotta deal with. It's a real problem trying to uh, get supplies because it's it's hard to make your way out to the uh, the big area, especially with the lack of resources these days and the fact that things can get so damaged. Uh, it's not an easy task. Even making it this whole time is gonna be very hard because your like your health bar and your blood they, they take a long time to build back up, and you gotta have good food and water meters in order for that to happen. That's uh, definitely something to keep in mind. Mm, let's get into this house. So sometimes these houses have like knives on the counters, which is not the case today, or weapons or tools. So it's kind of a bust. As you can see, the uh, the effects of the modern economy in the game is just absolutely brutal for resource collection. I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> you can also hop over things, if you didn't know that, and climb stuff too. So these buildings also very good uh, for finding resources. So we found ourselves a knife, obviously a bit of an upgrade, and something we can actually use to crack open our, you know, can of beans here. Ideally, you want to use a can opener if you can, because this does cause a little bit of damage sometimes to the uh, particular food goods that we have. And when you're eating stuff, keep in mind that you don't necessarily need to fill up your food bar. That could actually make you sick. Your stomach will. Uh, the food in your stomach will expand over time because the stomachs have a bit of a volumetric style to them so that's something to uh, keep in mind in that regard okay great so you can actually increase your slots too depending on the type of uh, items you have available to you which is kind of neat so we're we're not off to a, a bad start with the survival character here you know we're playing it semi-smart we're collecting resources uh, we're finding decent enough loot which is good. Uh, we're gonna try to draw this guy in here. Uh, the game screen tears a lot more now on this platform. It's crazy. Just absolutely crazy. Uh, yeah, so I don't think we're off to a horrible start here. You know, we've got all right meters kind of going. We're surviving, we're not too damaged. We have a sickness, which I don't like, but not the end of the world. You know, looking around, no, nothing there. So we are going to head over to actually the medic center here. I just want to keep looking at these buildings because, again, any sort of extra little food thing or something like that is, is almost crucial in this day and age of the game if you want to, you know, be successful and live long and, you know, prosper and all that. Hmm. Not the best situation, but there's the, uh, the health building right there. Sounds like flies. Flies always mean dead bodies. It's typically a bad sign. <laughs> so keep that in mind if you're hearing that sort of thing during like airfields or during certain battle situations. Uh, definitely means people have been perishing. And the more flies, the uh, the more bodies. At least I think that's fly sounds. It's the TV silent. So I should also mention a little bit about the movement. You know, you can actually do like weird tactical crawls. Are you gonna like aim in? No, I want to go this way. There we go. So you go prone. And if you're fighting, you can do like your bumpers to kind of move side to side. But it does take up your stamina. So keep that in mind. Do you want hits or do you want to dodge someone else's hit on you? And that's uh, something important to keep in mind. You can also sort of run while you crouch. Ah, oh, crap. They know something's up. That's fine. We made our way into the doctor's area. Sometimes you get like a, a gold mine of resources, and other times it's completely empty in this place. Scrub hat. It's not gonna help me too much. This one usually has pills in it, but no, we're out of luck. I was hoping to cure the what I believe I have is a cold. I'm not 100% sure. See so yeah, that? We're gonna actually be heading out of this town here. That guy's got a better bag, so that would actually be cool to get. This is a bad situation here because there's lots of zombies. Uh, so we're actually going to try to be tactical here and go into this area. 
watching her stamina, watching her health too, because, you know, they both go down faster than you think. Zombies are also quite aggressive uh, <laughs> these days, and they can really hurt up fast, so you gotta be careful. You don't want to get overwhelmed. So we're going to another area where we can hopefully trap a bunch of them. Again, having to watch our stamina bar because it goes down, you know, quickly, and then you gotta wait till it recharges a little bit. And those zombies, they they catch up to you fast. So this will give us a little bit of time. Sometimes there's like weapons up there, but not a whole often. Uh, a lot of time will you find them there. Really wanted that bag too. Okay, so that dealt with a little bit more of the zombies, but we still got a few on us. Seems like there hasn't been someone in this town for a little bit of time because usually the uh, the zombie numbers wouldn't be so uh, dense because we've dealt with a lot of them. We're gonna have to be careful too because it looks like it's starting to rain, which is obviously uh, another problem. Sometimes you find items in here, and not too often, not anything too great. Okay, folding buttstock. I feel like somebody dropped that there. There we go, we've uh, dealt with our zombie problems. And they're all locked away. And we can continue going on on our day, and hopefully another poor soul doesn't uh, come this way and uh, accidentally go into one of those buildings, because they are going to be screwed. So one of the best places to actually find food these days, or at least something you can make food from, is the greenhouses. And I say best as in, you know, it's hard to find food. It's e it's rare to even find food off of the zombies, which is a lucky coincidence as well. But sometimes the greenhouses uh, have food. They're kind of, they replace the boats almost to a degree. The, the boats along the, the shore that used to have lots of, you know, food with them. And then they also got nerfed a little bit. So just keep that in mind. So we also are losing a lot of our food meter, so we're going to try to top that off here. Noticing how even though, you know, we got food, we don't have necessarily a lot of it, and it's going to burn through fast, so we have to be careful uh, in getting to our next spot, uh, trying to make it up to the next town down there, which I'm not sure how well we'll do in that regard. There is smoke in the air too, so that's not, not really a common sight that you'll see. That means somebody was shooting the gas canisters or hitting them, causing explosions. So it's something you should take with a little bit of caution. Normally I don't suggest taking the main road anywhere. It's uh, very visible. But this is a game where it's like people are dying a lot faster because of lack of resources. So maybe going down the main road is smart. If not, the beach is a lot quieter. You can sneak along there and see what you can come across. Or you can try your luck in the open field. All are valid choices. <laughs> Okay. Let's take a look and see what happened here. It looks like some people were ending there themselves uh, using the propane tanks. Now it seems like he's glitched there. I don't know. Let's see if we can take his plum. Is that still good? Yeah, okay, the plum is still good. Great. So we actually get that from that survivor and. I know it sounds weird, but, you know, survivors are actually a really great source of food nowadays. People just, like, end it, and uh, you can just take the, the food off their bodies. It's really been the biggest source of food resources I've been able to gather uh, as of this update, and even, like, the last update, really. Because it is something that is rare and is going to keep you going a little bit. I don't suggest, you know, internal trips in this game until you've really actually stocked up on quite a bit of food. Like, a lot of it. Um, because it's going to just burn out. So we should also be careful about the rain. So the rain's coming down, it's cool in our character that makes us sicker and could kill us. But, you know, we're just kind of moving along for the sake of this experience and showcasing this. So I hope this was, you know, at least kind of helpful showing off, just kind of getting through that initial day in DayZ, <laughs> collecting like the resources and food to kind of get yourself started without having too many problems. And there's usually lots of houses along the way too. I don't typically 
go this way. Oh, following the railway is also a great way to get around the entire map of Daisy, just so you are aware. But I don't normally do this, but there's a house over here. It might be a little less looted than other places, and it might be a place to get resources. So that's generally just a sort of walkthrough of a typical day in Daisy as you try to survive in the modern era. You need to be smart about your food, you need to be careful about uh, your looting, and careful of others too, because I don't really, I didn't really have much of an opportunity to show that off because there weren't other people around, and they can be just as dangerous, if not more so, than zombies.